This detail looks at a very common framing configuration that we find in these old houses. So here we find the traditional type of wall framing. So it has a top plate. So here's the wall, here's the top plate, and then this is the floor joist that it supports. Now, as you can see, if you were to take a piece of plywood and you were to put it right here and nail it at the bottom, you could nail it into the top plate. So you can make a connection, you know, in the wall and brace it. If you come over here, however, there is no top plate. And what that means is if you were to put a piece of plywood right here, you wouldn't be able to nail it to anything because there's simply nothing there. To, to nail it to. So we need to make a connection to the floor that we're trying to restrain from movement. So this right here, we need to do something. We need to change the framing so that we can make that connection. Now over here, it's real simple. Because you have this top plate, you can make a connection between the end joist and the top plate with an L90 or some type of hardware to make that complete connection. So we're going to be looking at a couple of ways to address this problem, including the one we see in the new government guideline. Virtually every house that we've seen in this San Francisco Bay Area that does not have a top plate is built with full dimension lumber. So that would mean this right here would be a full four inches. This joist right here would be two inches wide. And what that does is that leaves a gap here of uh, two inches between the joist and the edge of the stud. This detail requires that a three by continuous top plate be installed. And if you look at this table, you will see that there is no dimension in three by lumber that equals two inches. Let's say we put in a three by three. So when we put that three by three in right here, there is an overhang of the framing that comes about right here. And then when the plywood tries to go up against the stud, it's going to hit that overhang and you can't install it. Let's go ahead and see what it would take to build this detail right here. So remember, this is old growth wood, so this will be a full four inches. This will be a full two inches. I've never seen a uh, situation where this was not full dimension lumber. You know, once codes develop, they always put in top plates. So you only see in these in the old houses where this lumber is, you know, full dimension. So this right here, this block that was put in, uh, this would have to be, you know, two inches, you know, from here to here. Because again, this is four inches, this takes up two inches, and that means we have two inches right here. And they don't make lumber that's two inches, two inches wide. So you'd have to take a three by six or a four by six something and rip it down so that this is a full two inches. Now you can imagine doing that in the field is pretty hard. A skill saw won't go through a lumber that's uh, two, two and a half inches thick. So you actually have to rip it on two sides and you know hope you make it. Now the other thing that has to happen here is you have to put in this L90. And so this L90 then, you know, it nails into the uh, two inch joist, then it nails into our new block, and that completes our load path. Now these are full four inch wide studs, and the end joists, or in fact all the joists are two inches wide, and so if we put a piece of plywood up there, we can't nail it into the top plate because there's not a top plate there. So what we need to do is we take a new inch and a half wide two by eight or two by 10, and then we'll take a piece of half inch plywood and we'll staple it to the side with inch and a half staples. Then we take that assembly and we put it on the side of the existing end joist on top of the stud, and then we'll nail it at the top with 12 penny nails to attach it to the existing joist. And then we'll take a piece of plywood and we'll, we'll set it in place like this, and then we'll nail it into the entire assembly. And that completes our entire load path. It's a very simple. What we do is we use a system that we believe makes the most direct and most effective connection. So remember the distance between here and here, this joist is a full two inches. The distance between here and here is four inches. And so that means this uh, gap right here is two inches. It's not inch and a half, it's two inches. So what we do is we go to a builder supply and we have them rip down three by six so that this dimension here is two inches.
inches. This dimension here is five and a half inches. And then what we do is we take that block and we nail it into the, our end joist with some uh, 12 pennies. Remember, 12 pennies are three and a quarter inches long, so you get the penetration that you need. And then we put our plywood in, and then we nail the plywood to the block, and we're all set. As you can see, there are many ways to make this connection. There might even be more that I haven't thought of. Now, I've never done the first one that's part of this new uh, retrofit guideline, but I have done the second and the third one, but all of them will work. And so you just need to find which one works best for you in every individual situation. It seems like you always find something different, and it looks like any of these will be helpful at some point.